Hey everybody, welcome back to Spirit Please. More Spiral Knights. We are gonna rock out a gate because it's just been too long since we got in get in on a gate. So I've chosen the Diamond Pawn Gate for speed purposes. We have not done this little like poison semi theme in a long time. We also have some sleep missions we will be going on on the probably second part of this. Um, and then uh, I mean we're gonna hope you don't enter the compounds, but we know how these things work. We will probably definitely end up in a compound. So we got our party open for the the majesty that is known as a random player. Hopefully we don't meet anybody named Jelly Boss. <laughs> in which case, uh, he will absolutely be allowed to stay in our party, provided players does not come out and be the, uh, the weapon we see uh, flooding the screen. Pardon me, it's a natural form of etiquette, right? Again, the attitude that pervades lockdown. Sorry, your computer's garbage. Well, thanks, man. That makes everybody happy. <laughs> so, I mean, the, the normal gun I take on this, okay, is the uh, the Winter Grave, but, I mean, we'll be fine with the Lance. And I use this, this sword so often. It's just too strong. Any brandish line is just absolutely amazing. Hello, cat. You've noticed I started talking. You know, you might not be able to determine what I'm saying, but you know I'm saying something. And that assumes activity and assumes you want to knock my mic down. I'm just going to... Oh, this cat, dude. But you know something's about to happen. And then you stand there like, why aren't you petting me? I assume pets. <laughs> this is the life of a cat. Pets are assumed. You know, like in the Egyptian times, it should happen now. Cats live the whole victim of narrative that we live in America. I deserve this. And where do you think that comes from? You think it comes from dogs? No, dogs are nice and loyal. Cats, on the other hand. I'm just like, I, 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 I'm assuming pets, but if you don't pet me, I'm going to leave the, the stinkiest poop in the litter box, Master. You have no idea. Anyway, the lucky prize box thing is out. I didn't know it was a new thing. Yeah, I don't think it is a new thing. But it's new-er to me. The rainbows in the guild hall. Cat, you're... Oh my gosh, this cat. Can you can you not knock the mic off the stand, please? I'm held together by a, a razor's edge, man. This is not professional equipment. If you don't sit down, I'm going to throw you through a window. I say that like an angry father... Who wishes his daughters would listen to him? Because I wouldn't really do that. Thank you. You gonna purr into the mic? Okay, that's good. Yeah, stop, stop yelling at me. It's not my fault. You are what you are. But I, I have a, a certain, like, warm spot in my heart for the Valance. It was my first gun ever that I got to five star. My theory was like. <laughs> Dad Rage might have taken over there. No, oh, because I almost died because he literally did knock the mic down. Sorry about that. But anyway, back to normalcy. We don't wake up my uh, my kids. Jeez. All right, let's let's not throw. When was the last time we actually died in arcade in an arcade run? They're so passive and fun. You know, I was, my theory was like I can just, you know kill everything with neutral why why bother getting making all this stuff branching out into all these paths when i can just have one path that's like the opposite of modern spirituality which teaches you, you know, there are many paths to god well you know we were just like there's one path to killing creatures it's in the valance it's in the concept of neutral weapons we can do this come on out gentlemen oh jeez. we'll just walk through the poison because that's smart to do i honestly didn't see it i was looking at other things because that's one of the uh, problems with running things in uh, windowed mode. Dude, the swift strike saves me again. So good. So, I mean, maybe one of you guys can just answer this question. Do the, do, the, do the zombies bite you? Like, any... Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to be confused as to where I actually was. Do they, do they bite you at all? Anymore is that even a thing? I, I've never, I've not seen it in a while, and I forget where that actually uh, when that came up. It wasn't a conversation. I think it was on the Discord. By the way, if you guys have not joined the Discord, recommended. Lots of good info. Probably one of the 
one of the things holding the community together as a core is the uh let me stop picking up everything but the healing potion or the healing pill rather but yeah man free shadow layers go on every so often oh you want a lockdown match go for it tips and tricks I'm gonna die right here. Oh, we didn't die. We might now. Oh, that's, we're just getting so lucky. So lucky. Maybe, maybe we should uh, buy a prize box here, right? No, we can't do that. We just don't have the funds, dude. It's like 2900 for a box. That, that's what I got. Ain't a whole lot. Let's just do this right now. Give myself some peace of mind. Almost dying on this stage. I can blame a cat, right? Actually, no, I can't. I blame my, uh... I blame my dad rage. You're not gonna listen to me where I'm just gonna act so big and tough and not really do anything to you. <laughs> now, that being said, the, uh... My older daughter is such a good heart. So we watched the movie Hook yesterday. If you don't know what, uh... That just seems really loud. If you don't know what Hook is, it's a, uh... Like, I don't know if you know the story of Peter Pan. The boy who never grew up, lived in Never Never Land. Well, he, he went back home to reality. Because he was originally from Earth. And he uh, he married, I think, Wendy's granddaughter, if I'm not mistaken. And he's an adult. And then he goes back to um, Neverland and he fights Hook. Because Hook took his actual kids. It's really, really a good story. Uh, Robin Williams, who... Um, an atheist agnostic, I believe, and eventually committed suicide. It's a very, very interesting uh, life. Um, I recommend looking into it. The uh, the whole, it, it was really, it, it was a really nice story. I mean, Robin Williams made some really good movies. And a uh, very good actor. The, there's one part of the movie where it's discussing, like, Peter Pan's origin, his birth. And it, uh, it shows a, a baby carriage like on a hill parents talking about the future of peter pan his, their son in england and how he's gonna be like a lawyer he's gonna do all this cool stuff and then poison boo and then he's like the narrative says so i didn't like things so i ran away and the carriage as he's an infant starts rolling down the hill and then the next scene is him on the ground and tinkerbell finds him and carries him off to neverland and raises him by a fairy and the uh the whole thing is kind of weird and and then so today or yesterday rather we get home after picking up my daughter from work jeez wow that came out wrong after getting off of work because she <laughs> she's eight and doesn't work yet after picking her up from work she she she's in tears at, at the door she stops turns around looks at me and said and with i'm like honey what is wrong you all right she's like i was just thinking of peter pan when, when he was alone as a baby I'm like oh my gosh dude and i give her a hug and i almost started crying because like you you really start feeling for your kids when they have issues like this like but this is this is some deep thinking for an eight-year-old like i'm like yeah that baby needs help doesn't it babies always need help I mean, it's it's just in us so we kind of like that's when i wanted to get into it and, like i talked to her about more adult things like uh, why abortion is wrong <laughs> and it's not about choice it's about life but you know she's eight not yet not just yet you want to mess a kid up start talking about adult themes that they have no control or power over that are genuine injustices that anybody can see but human beings uh, specifically adults try to negotiate their way around creation as if your life from infanthood is meaningless and you can just say it's a choice instead of an actual life I mean, it's, I want to talk to you about these things but just not yet not yet let's go I pop two pills that's what I do they're talking about a lot you know you be secretive Stand by.
Okay, man. Blast from the past. Holy crap. All right, down we go. We fight the slime, the slime boss. Is that, is that a thing? So that's like uh, crossing platforms, right? Slay the spire. Anyway, P.L. Hook was a, a great movie. We sat down. I made the daddy fries. Uh, the daddy fries. For those of you that don't have a daddy that makes fries. The daddy fries are like, um, I literally cut up potatoes. I make them from scratch. Um, I put some seasoning on them. I, I put only like two tablespoons of oil. Oh man, that's a big topic, Nindef. I make two tablespoons full of oil. All right, let me finish my, my daddy fries thing. Two tablespoons of salt. And, um, wow. How many times have we done this, dude? And we just walked up the wrong platform. And that's it. And you bake it 450 degrees. You cut them into, into like fry shape. It's not like tiny fry shape. It's, it's decent fry shape, like Burger King fry shape, if you know your fast food joints. And that's it. And you, I put them in a giant bowl, and I have the kids like graze when they eat them. They're just the most delicious thing. Uh, the salt actually like you don't you can't rub it off with your fingers. It gets baked into the fries themselves. So it's it's a, it's its own like kind of joy where you don't have to put anything on them. At least I think so, and the kids love them. And usually I have like just a generic fruit. Like I think we had a uh, mandarin oranges. Rinsed them off. I'm about to type out a long story here so you can be patient with me. I'm on my video editing skills, they are okay. I mean, I used to make uh, AMVs. I mean, that's the only qualifications I have. They're on animatemusicvideos.org if you ever want to look. It goes <laughs> my for, for so let me read this here I know for my own personal self-discipline I gotta distance myself from things that have a hold on me so things that are addicting there are so many things in this world that are addicting dude everything and this game itself is one of them what uh, Nietzsche said what sacred games must, must we invent to keep ourselves pacified well not in so many words I'm paraphrasing when we when we destroy God when we make ourselves the own our own creator judge oh judge and redeemer of ourselves we define our life by our own terms all of it's about me 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 and you can see the jeez it's almost like i knew you were just going to teleport there yeah and you uh you know it's it's called the religion of self this is uh this is socialism in a nutshell sort of right because i just talked to a guy who really advocates socialism yet he will not take the time out of his day to talk to me about important things because his time is precious which is like a, a giant conundrum and um uh, like <laughs> 
like a, uh, what's what I'm looking for? It, it throws itself against the concept of socialism when you value your time. Well, time and labor are not yours after a certain point. They go to somebody else. Specifically, the government, who puts itself above God. Da da. Back in the day, back in the, back in my day. But every time I start talking about the olden times, I, I feel like I'm an old man. I am kind of right. I think I'm one of the older gamers that plays this game. I'm sure there's people older than me, but I can't quite find a game like Spiral Knights. And you guys might agree on that. Doop, 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 doop. Da -da 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 -da. What do we want on our next step? D two two. I think about the Skulver clone mentality. I'd like I like the how do I put this? I like the 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 thing about America itself and the Judeo Christian worldview is you can't decide where you are born. That is decided for you. Right? But your parents don't make that choice either. You are DNA. God makes that choice for you. Or it's it depends on your worldview, right? Or your uh 2.3 or 3.2 billion bits of information decides that, that stuff for you. It's not decided. It's, you're not this. You don't have a choice when you are born. You don't have a choice what color you look at. But you are still valued. You have the choice to basically in America specifically. You can get. You can be successful if you work for it. That's the thing. That's the thing that socialism kind of takes away from you. You don't. You, it denies you your work after a certain point. It says someone else will take care of you. This whole coronavirus thing we can see in the media, like, <laughs> like what the crap? It's a. Uh, I know Winston Churchill said it. I forget who else said it. Emmanuel something or Rom Rom something. Um, and forgive me for misquoting. It's it's been a while since I researched socialism as a whole. But he said never waste a good crisis because what happens in a crisis is people appeal to something bigger, appeal to appeal to something greater because you need that 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 tra uh, not even transcend it but just a greater united force and power to come and save you. All right, but that's where government falls short because government doesn't really care about you. All right, it'll save the the whole and you could see this in the uh, the Chinese regime right where they're welding people inside of their houses just to quarantine it where Italy just kind of cuts itself off from all. Forms of everything because they just like, what's he what's the old shirt say? I'm not arguing. I'm just Italian. Sometimes they make a the the culture itself might make a, a bigger deal out of things that do not need to be made a big deal out of. And my wife and I like when I was sick for that time. I don't know if you guys guys were paying attention to the videos, but like when I was sick, I I think like I think I had the corona when I was sick because I'm, I'm I mean myself I am very susceptible to respiratory issues. It felt like I had the flu. It was a fever for two straight days. I did like literally nothing, and then I was fine. And the entire family did not have the same type that I did. They had a different strand. They had the the stomach bug flu, which is very interesting. But at the same time, I'm not sure because I know it, it's more on par with SARS than it is anything else. It's not necessarily a. Uh, my wife tested positive for uh, the actual flu virus i didn't test for anything uh, my doctor's used to giving me what i need to uh, get through that which are basically antibiotics and steroids it cleared up the respiratory issue and my body fought off the viral infection because usually when i have bronchitis i do not get a fever but i had a like very high fever and i was in bed for like two days so i didn't feel like doing anything so dude maybe i had corona already and then you got people who are not even traveling outside the country just randomly getting it Anyway, I think that'll do it for this one. We can talk more about the past later. But anyway, once again, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, click the like button. Subscribe if you want to see more in the future. Thank you for delving with me. We'll be back next time for the second part of this. No one's joined. I'm feeling very sad. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Take care.